Beryl had a good time teaching at the nursing school in uh, Kathmandu. And then we had another uh, visit to Tanzen Hospital. Nepal uh, has very few roads. And in these pictures, there are almost no roads. People would have to travel um, three days, sometimes on foot, to get to the hospital. And so um, there was a lot of, there's a lot of hardship in that country, particularly uh, during and after the monsoons when a lot of bridges are washed out. So uh, again, it was wonderful to participate in this for a, a few months. Uh, we had two uh, women who came in uh, with uh, hemoglobin of 1.5, they were uh, bleeding and pregnant. And before we could get to them and, and help them with blood transfusions, they both died. So there's a lot of hardship. We had a lot of advanced disease, and uh, uh, this poor woman looks like he's suffering under a, a lot, but it's really very simple to, uh, if one takes your time and are careful, to remove the ovarian cyst and, and the thyroid. Uh, the third visit was to Roxall, uh, 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 work of the Church of Pakistan, um, and uh, the Emanuel Hospital Association, which is a network of a lot of Christian hospitals in um, Pakistan. And again, uh, this is one of the poorest areas of India. Uh, we saw a number of patients, newborns, who had tetanus, uh, neonatal tetanus from infection of, of the umbilical cord stump. So they became quite expert at managing these uh, cases, and uh, the survival was, was really good. Another interesting thing was that um, uh, there were a lot of young men with obstructing uh, duodenal ulcers. Uh, the, the, the outlet to the stomach would scar shut, and, and these poor guys would be unable to eat. So they were very thin, like 100 pounds, and uh, really very easy to operate on. But uh, uh, it was the skill of uh, this assistant, Daniel Tapa, and the instruments and the routine that were able to sail through this operation in about 20 minutes. Um, so that, it was a blessed time. In, in all of these places helping people and we had a lot of the joy of service. The area of our final work uh, was in Kyrgyzstan and uh, again, uh, Buskashi is a, is a wonderful sport. Uh, if you look here, you see these, there's a beheaded calf uh, and these guys are trying to tear it from each other and the goal of the game is to carry this into the other end of the field and drop it in a circle. Uh, so. Kyrgyzstan is um, um, right here. We worked in Bishkek, and um, the family practice program had satellite in all of the uh, cities there on the, um, in the provinces of Kyrgyzstan. Population is about six million people. Kyrgyzstan is a beautiful country, and since we're short, I'll just flash through. Um, the Kyrgyz are nomadic uh, shepherds uh, from way back, and they love to be up high in the meadows in the summertime and then they go down to lower attitudes in, uh, in the winter. Of course, now they're uh, settled and they go up in the summertime and down into villages uh, or to Bishkek in the wintertime. Uh, the country has the world's second largest lake in terms of volume. Uh, it's 100 miles long, but it's a mile deep. And uh, uh, right at 20 minutes from Bishkek, there's this beautiful park. Uh, just a few pictures. Uh, we lived in a, an apartment building, in a building like this that you see straight ahead of us. Uh, this is the funeral of the Deputy Minister of Health in 1994 or 95. The bazaar is very, oh yeah, <laughs> pigs. <laughs> we found all sorts of fun things uh, in the bazaar. Uh, animals in the trunk of a, tri of, of a car, meat, uh, market. They would call this, a, it was rather smelly, the pit of despair. And uh, uh, so, uh, as, as you know, um, uh, Kyrgyzstan became an independent country in 1991, and uh, there was a flight of physicians. The Soviet healthcare system was wearing out, although it was extensive and uh, to many places, uh, the care was deteriorating. There was um, no real primary care. One of the problems was that the um, 
uh, when, a, when a child would have to go to school, he'd have to see about a dozen different doctors, ear, nose, and throat, eye, neurology, uh, and psychiatry. And uh, as we toured through the city, uh, we uh, met the different surgical uh, and other uh, things, and I'll just show this. So like this austere Department of Surgery, uh, the acad academician Mamakayev and his, his team, uh, the chief surgeon, uh, so they took us on a tour of their wonderful facilities, and out in the villages they had uh, clinics like this. Uh, the higher the hat, the higher your position. Uh, when we first got there, uh, Burl and Heather uh, and I taught English, while we were surveying the situation. And um, uh, the decision was made to establish a specialty of family practice in the country. And so uh, uh, we started a clinic and uh, the, the main teaching program was in this institute here behind the Ministry of Health. This is the faculty. Uh, the, the largest, there were, I was the first and then Tom Chu in the middle and, and then people came one by one and some were there part time. The fellow on the left, Barton Smith in the gray shirt is still there working and holding it together. Uh, so we uh, gathered doctors and, and trained them to be teachers of family medicine in a one year uh, training course. Uh, we went through um, eight of these and trained 82 doctors and then they went out to the different oblast uh, provincial areas and um, taught the uh, primary care physicians in family group practices, they called it, or the polyclinics of the country. Uh, so I did surgical aspects of the, of the teaching and some of the general aspects, and we all saw patients and practiced. Uh, during the last few years, we had others from Tajikistan, uh, and Uzbekistan and Kazakhstan come and uh, they went and started uh, programs. We also had, uh, you know, a lot of other medical calls outside of the institute. And uh, one day uh, at the end of a con conference on Issaquah, I got this phone call that it was a burn patient in Narin. And so this is Aziza. We went down the road instead of going back to Bishkek and arranged her care, and she came through beautifully. We also cared for the homeless in um, Bishkek and uh, later started a homeless clinic. Then uh, when our family practice clinic got started, we realized how desperate the situation was for nurses. Nurses were very downtrodden. Uh, you wouldn't even call them a profession, they called them intermediate level. And um, they <clears throat> were hardly permitted to speak to the patient. They uh, were just allowed to do what the doctor told them to do and to keep the place clean. So we found that uh, these nurses had a lot to go, uh, a lot to learn, and Although Beryl was supposed to be starting a guest house, nobody realized it. It was suddenly upon us. She jumped right in and started teaching the clinic nurses. And so the clinic nurses grew into a, a teaching program. The head of the institute came and he said, hey, I've talked to the Minister of Health. We need to train nurses. And so the family practice nurse training program was born and consisted again of eight years of classes of about 15 who then were retrained into uh, really modern nursing, and they uh, then went out to the oblast or provincial areas and uh, carried forth. So these are some home visits, and um, uh, this is a burn patient in, in a home that we saw. Um, she actually did better at home than she did in the hospital. This is a little bit of the structure. Uh, we were under the Ministry of Health, in the Postgraduate Medical Education Institute. Um, and uh, then uh, graduation was a great time in the nursing care. This is Dr. Chubakov giving a diploma to one of our graduates and uh, one of the early graduating classes. Um, and 
uh, the, the government and the, the country began to realize, and they had a big, uh, they instituted a nurse's day, a Florence Nightingale day. And so the nurses put together this poster here, which uh, just illustrates how the program began in the center and grew, uh, and the different branches reached out to the different pro provinces. So uh, there was a lot of teaching in the regional areas, in Karakal, in Narin, uh, oral exams in Jalalabad, and uh, there was all this literature, and there was no recent literature in Russian, so uh, we had to uh, produce a book. Um, there's a slogan, a lecture consists of the lecturer reading his notes and the student writing them down and the material not going through the mind of either. So there was a great need for uh, literature. Uh, there was an old Russian book uh, in 1950, the only thing we could find, we inquired in Moscow, and there was nothing else except a few minor things. Uh, one of the things is Bonki. We actually have some along with us. Uh, you put these, you, you uh, put alcohol in this, and then you uh, fill it, you light it, you put it on somebody's back to suck out the evil spirits, to suck out the pneumonia. Uh, this is a worldwide practice. Virginia Kaliki came out, she was the uh, retired dean of a nursing school and coordinated the uh, putting together of the book. And uh, Chubakov uh, reviewed all of this uh, on, uh, in front of the girl with the uh, um, blue jacket is the great white notebook, which is all the notes that were gathered together. And so we had to or organize them, Virginia led, and then we had them uh, printed at Al Salam Printers in, in Bishkek. Uh, we have a copy of uh, this book, Medical Surgical Nursing in Russian. And there was another book, Fundamentals of Nursing, which you see in this picture, uh, which was published in 2004. Um, and Medical Surgical Nursing came out in 6,000 copies in 2006 and has been distributed all over Central Asia. It was reviewed by people at the Medical Academy presented in Tajikistan, and we just had wonderful hospitality and thanks from all the people and just had a wonderful time. Uh, at the end of the program, uh, there was a jubilee celebration and um, they gave all of us awards and it's traditional to address the honored matriarch in Kyrgyz costume and uh, so uh, Earl received this lovely award. But everything doesn't end so happily and I, um, uh, we had a lot of medical emergencies and this is a nighttime evacuation at three o'clock in the morning in Osh from somebody who was in septic shock and uh, he was flown to Germany and he survived. So um, I just want to end to say that we've had a wonderful time of service. It's been a wonderful joy uh, to be able to do this and I hope that all of you will be able to find a path that you love and will live on uh, to enjoy it. Here are some of the principles, ideas that I've given, and I wanted to end now, and if there are any questions, um, this might help you think of some of the topics. Thank you, David. Uh, <clears throat>